Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to take and show you how to make a flat ring weld. Now, we've already made a ring weld, a basic ring weld, where we've come around to the top, and we've welded in the narrower plane. We did that on a piece of quarter inch by half inch flat bar stock, and looped it around the easy way, so to speak. This time, we are going to take and bend it around the hard way. We are going to be using our handy dandy little scrolling fork here and also the horn of the anvil for a little bit of tweaking here and there to get this bent around. But before we go to that, we need to take and scarf the ends. And for you guys across the pond, that means this is quarter inch by 12.5 mil flat stock or 12 mil by six mil, if you will. So it's six mil by 12 mil is nice and easy for a quarter by half. Flat bar stock is what we're using. Same in the other video. So to establish a scarf, first we're gonna take and upset it a bit. We wanna upset this material ever so slightly. We're gonna just do that on the surface of the material, on the surface of the anvil, and then we're gonna draw a really short taper. And now it's going to want to spread a little bit on you. That's fine. You can just correct that back if you need to. But that's all we're trying to do is take and create a nice short taper, if you will. So there we go. We've got that in scarfed and done. Now, usually I would just let this sit on the side of the forge, cool down, do another one or something like that. But to save time, we're going to go ahead and cool that end off. This is mild steel, so there's not a danger of hurting it or ruining it or anything like that. We're gonna flip it around now, and we're gonna take and heat up and scarf the other end. But unlike this end that we just did, we're gonna flip this piece a full 180 degrees and scarf it the opposite direction. So this way, and here's the secret, when those two come around, they'll lay right on top of each other like they're supposed to, and they won't look all whopper jaw like this. They will actually, come around and made up nicely on top of one another. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up one more time. We're gonna get this nice and hot. Give ourselves a little bit of a bump there, tighten up the old hammer handle. I need to put a new handle on this. I seem to go through these with so ever many 5,000 blows or so, <laughs> five to 10,000 hammer licks. I need a new handle. I'm rough, on, I'm rough on hammer handles. Comment in the sec comment section down below if you're rough on hammer handles too. <laughs> it just seems like some guys like me, we're hard on tools sometimes. I don't mean to be, but man is it hard to keep a tool nice for me. So we're heating this up, it's almost there. Same thing, we're gonna try to upset this a little bit but because we have the scarf on this end, we're gonna have to be kind of gentle with that. We don't wanna take and hammer on that too much because we don't wanna deform the scarf. So we're gonna do a little lighter blows to get that upset. This upset is just so you don't thin the material too much when you go to welding. It's really easy to do that, so it's worth notating. So there's the top of that one. So we're gonna flip a full 180 degrees. And we're gonna put that little short scarf, same length as the other one on this piece now. So now that's done. Now we can start bending this up. Once this gets too hot to hold in hand, we'll switch to carrying it with a pair of tongs. So I'll go ahead and heat this up again real quick, and I'll be right back with you. So the initial part of this piece is all heated up. We're gonna fit it in between the forks of our tines, and ooh, it's so close on the fit here. We might not actually be able to use this pair of scrolling tongs. It's pretty tight on that fit where that upset was, so. It's fine a little further back, but where that upset was, it doesn't like bending right where that F's upset was. So we might have to take and bend that over the horn instead. 
there's nothing wrong with that. This gives us an excuse to use our hammer. So there we go, we're starting our bend. We'll get a longer section of this hot. The area that's not upset will fit in our will fit in our bending jig just fine. Let me find a pair of tongs to grip this with that I can be happy with. The pair of tongs that you choose to grip this from the side angle with, you do need to be able to grip it on the side angle because if you don't grip it on the side angle, what will end up happening to it, if you don't grip it on the side profile and you're just trying to grip it with a pair of flat tongs, you'll do a lot of wandering this way and that way. So we don't want that. So we want to be able to hold it securely. We're going to get a longer heat on this and we're going to use this scrolling tongs again, this nice little bending forks that we made. We did make these in another video, so if you haven't checked out that video, go check out the video where I made this tool here. Also, don't do like I just did there with my gloved hand picking up something like this after hot steel has been in here. That thing could be really cooking hot, so use a pair of tongs. Don't do as I do, do as I say, right? Doesn't all of our fathers say that at some point in time? Or mothers do as I say, not as I do? <laughs> Anyways, all right. That's the secret passcode for this video. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> That's a fun little thing we've been doing for a little bit, just putting little secret passcodes in here just to make sure to see who's watched the video or how far they made it into it. Just a fun little thing to do between me and my subscribers. So now we're going to go ahead and give it some more bending. Do, 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 do. Taking little bites like we've done in the other video. We're trying to get this on around. Now, just like I did in the other video, I'm going to have to. When this is all said and done, I will have to come back through if you will, I will have to come back through this piece and straighten everything up, adjust that to be a perfectly round hoop. This is just meant to take and get you close. So unlock this tongue here, and we're gonna flip it around, and we're gonna heat the other end and bend it on around. So as you can see, this shouldn't take you too long to make a flat ring like this. And for those of you wondering, um, why would I care to make a ring like this? Well, this is going to be part of an upcoming project series that I plan on doing around trivets. I'm going to be making a bunch of different decorative trivets for my own shop, and I'm going to be bringing you along the process, showing you some pricing strategies and things like that. Uh, that will be, that's still a few months out yet, so uh, be on the lookout for it be on the lookout for it when it finally does drop and I actually do do the video. Uh, it's going to take me a little bit of time to get that that video produced because I have some prior commitments that video series produced because I do have quite a few prior commitments already um, to customers and whatnot. But again, hold with a bated breath. Actually, don't do that. Breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Never listen to a guy on YouTube who tells you to hold your breath. Kind of like a car salesman. Can't trust them. All right. No offense to car salesmen out there. I'm sure you're just trustworthy as any old folks, but you all know what you do. <laughs> so I switched to a pair of flat stock tongs here, just taking and holding these in the flat, but you're gonna see some slip out here. They're real prone to that. Trying to get this ring right on around. There we go, we're at that thick part that it doesn't like. We'll go over the horn, give that a little shaping. And yeah, we're pretty close. I've got a little more shaping up to do on this ring to get it right. 
you can just dance it around. But the main point is you want these ends here to come real close to lining up just like that. So you can see how those make kind of a negative or a positive of each other. You want to get these nicely aligned and closely sitting together. So one way of getting that, if you see that little gap there, we don't want that. So if I hammer on the top of this one, it's going to bring this one closer. If you hammer on this side, let's point this little mister thing. If you hammer on this side, it's going to move this in towards that one. Same way, if you hammer on this side, it's going to move this one the opposite way. It has kind of a bananaing effect. So just hammer down on that one, and then I hammer down on that one, and that brings those two up to one another for a much tighter fit. So now we're going to go ahead and put this part in the fire, and this is the part that you all have been waiting for. We are going to forge weld it. So first we're going to come out here to the flat, and we're going to forge weld it on the flat. <coughs> Again, don't do as I do, do as I say. We're going to get that ring section up to a nice high welding heat, and we're going to come out and weld it directly on the flat. So we almost have this piece up to a perfect welding heat. I clipped out there so I could focus on bringing it up to a nice perfect welding heat. Now we're going to pull it out of the fire and we're going to tap it together at the anvil. So make sure you have your hammer at the ready or even in hand. I like to have it just at the ready so you're not wasting any time. Out of the fire, not hot enough. The top one's not hot enough. We put it back to the fire. The bottom one was perfect, but the top one was just not quite there. So we're going to take it up just a little higher in the fire. So if you notice, I pulled it out, I looked at it, I saw one was a different color than the other, and I knew it wasn't hot enough. Don't even attempt to hit it at that point. There's no point in hitting it and trying to weld it up. If you try to weld it at that stage, one's got liquid or molten metal, the other one does not, they're not going to stick. They're not going to stick together and you're not going to get a weld. So take your time, bring it up to a proper heat. This is the subject of forge welding videos. They take a while to do because it takes a little bit to forge weld and do it accurately. The larger the material stock, the more soak time at a welding heat you're going to need in order to have a successful weld. So this way you can have your timing on point. We're almost there, I think. Take it up just a wee hotter. I'm probably pushing the air a little more than what I should right now, but we're gonna take, and take it up just to try to take and get it in on this heat. You guys don't want to watch five minutes of me standing here cranking a hand blower up to the, my desired temp that I would like to see. So I think that's good enough. Out we go. So we got that first little weld in there. That set. We're going to push that back in the coat. We're going to get it covered. Remember, oxygen eats steel. Oxygen will burn. If you can see your piece, the oxygen can see your piece too. So we're going to bring that back up to a nice welding heat, bring it out, I'm going to set the welds again. Once I'm confident that I have it welded in this plane, I will, you know, top and bottom or in the quarter inch or six mil plane, then I will turn it up on end, go to the horn, and I will refine it there. At, I'll move the I'll move the camera before I do that so you can see me welding it on the opposite plane there. On the 12 mil or half inch plane. So we're gonna take one more heat at this here. We're almost getting there. We've got quite a bit of oxygen. I'm rushing it just a little bit for sake of camera. That might be a failure point of mine. Let's bring it out. OK, 
Okay, I think I'm feeling fairly confident with that, that that is a nice stuck weld there. And now you're going to see a little bit of a bow tie effect on the top. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now those are the parts now that we are going to take and weld in and then true up our circle. So I'll have to come over the horn and do that. So I'll move the camera and be right back with you once this is back up to heat and I have moved the camera sufficiently so you can see that that weld take place. So we've got this piece up to a welding heat again. I'm going to come out, throw it over the horn and work out the thing. I want to be very careful. I don't over forge it at the horn because I'm not trying to create a divot in my hoop here. I'm just trying to refine those outer parts of that scarf. So out we come, we're going to weld those down a little bit, don't go too far, take your time. These can end up bending instead of welding. Put it right back in the fire, bring it right back to a nice welding heat. And if you've noticed, with proper air control in your fire, you will not get any sort of sparking on this piece. When I try to push it too fast for demonstrations here on YouTube, that's where I get most of my problems with sparking or burning on the piece is when I try to push it too hard, like I'm doing right now. I'm trying to speed the process along and that's not a normal thing for welding heat. Now you'll see this on carbon steels a lot. You might see a little bit of sparking or a little bit of surface burning around the edges. That's not a good thing ultimately, but whenever you're welding in something like a cleft weld or a bird's mouth weld on a high carbon steel bit, you have a higher risk of burning that outer material uh, as you're trying to get the lower carbon material to heat up to the same temperature if you're not careful. So it requires even more careful forging to make sure that doesn't happen. So it's pretty hot here. I'm pushing it that final little bit, probably a little hotter than I should with the oxygen. We're gonna come out and we're gonna weld that final little bit down and right on top of the surface of the anvil. And again, we're just trying to work that down and now we can start truing up our ring. If you've got a good weld, you shouldn't see any distortion. Let me quench off those tongs, you're getting a little hot there. Uh, if you got a good weld, you shouldn't see any distortion in the actual welding planes themselves. They shouldn't shift, they should not shift away from each other. They should be just good to go. So I'm gonna leave that a little bulky and not dress it down completely. And the reason for that being is I actually have a full three-day forge welding intensive coming up. I believe it is in July. I'll put the date in the description down below where I will be down close around Cincinnati in Goshen, Ohio. And I'll be teaching a, a three-day forge welding intensive workshop. So if you get the chance to come check that out, uh, to sign up. Again, I'll put the information, the contact information for that in the description down below <coughs> for that class. Now this is 2019. This may not be an ongoing thing. This is just what I'm doing right now. So if you want to get on board, now's your chance. I don't know when the next class scheduling will be but you can always check our website out as well for details at ChristCenteredIronworks.com. You should be able to take and find uh, course scheduling and things like that. Again, the information for that will be down in the description. If it is no longer in the description, that means the class has already been done and over with, and we've removed that bit of data. So, uh, you know, there you go. The class has already been taken. 
just in case you're watching this video in like the year 2025, you're not thinking about taking a class with me <laughs> and running over to a place that I'm not there, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're almost got this fully out to heat. I'm gonna stop my yammering and get to hammering. And we're just gonna keep dressing up this hoop. We're not trying to do a lot of big heavy blows here or heavy forgings. We're just trying to take and get everything straightened out, ironed out. And if I didn't finish my thought, the reason why I'm gonna leave this a bit bulky is because this is gonna be part of a class aid for me to take and show people where the weld line actually occurred and what I was trying to accomplish and what it should look like at this stage. So that's the purpose for not dressing down the weld completely. You can if you want to on your own. Clearly for a project, you'll want to do that. But since I'm gonna use this for a later teaching aid, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so there we have it. So there is your flat welded ring. You gotta make sure you drop it once for good luck. That's always a good thing. So again, you could dress in the scarfs, like the toe of these scarfs a little bit better with some light welding heats. There's enough thickness here still. There's an actual upheavalness. There's an upheaving of thickness. That's why we upset the two ends first. So this way we could eventually dress out and clean off those welds if we wanted to. And we definitely have enough thickness in this direction as well that we could dress out uh, to blend the welds a little bit better. But that's it for today. I hope you found this informative. If you did and you'd like to support us here at Christ Center Ironworks, go ahead and hit that like button and tell us what you thought of the video. Also, share it around with your friends. That's a great appreciated way of helping us uh, for free. And if you'd like to take and pledge your financial support to Christ Center Ironworks here and what Jessica and I do to try to take and continue our mission to provide free education out here on YouTube uh, on daily content and videos, a great way of doing that is checking out our website over at blacksmithpdfs.com and consider purchasing a power hammer plan and or an ebook to help you build your blacksmithing enterprise. So that's it for today. Again, God bless you. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.